Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Melanie and I'm a teacher in San Antonio, Texas. And today's video is just going to be a little different. This video is really for a person who gets paid on a monthly basis. So I know that usually state employees, government employees, there's all different, um, payroll calendars out there but for the most part teachers get paid once a month so this video is really intended for any brand new teacher that's coming into the field welcome welcome to the family or maybe you're a teacher and you just are like me it took 17 years to figure this shit out Okay, so this is like Adulting 101 Teacher Edition for budgeting. Okay, <laughs> so let's begin. So I pulled out a little work, a workspace for myself so that I can show you exactly what goes behind my budgeting videos. So every week, I budget on a weekly basis. I give myself a paycheck every Friday and I stretch it out from Friday to the next Thursday and then Friday I get paid again. But I do this, but I do this and there's a plan behind it. I don't just willy nilly come up with the magic number and say, this is what I'm going to do. So at the beginning of each month, so today's July the 1st. And so I thought it'd be fun to come on here to show you exactly what I do. And if you need help budgeting, maybe this is something that you can incorporate into your life. I don't know. I just thought I'd show this, what I do. It's really basic 101. These are life skills that were never taught to me. And it took me a really long time to learn. I don't know why, but it just, I was a spender and I still am a spender, a consumer. And so I never wrapped my head around savings until later in life, which is mistake number one. But you know what? I caught on. I realized I'm working really hard for my money. I should be saving the majority of my money so I don't have to work until I'm you know, 70, 80 years old. I want to enjoy myself. So I'm going to lay out for you how I get to my weekly budget getting paid once a month. So for this example, I'm going to show you an example of a typical month. And then I'm going to show you my actual month for July. Okay, so for this example, we are talking about money that is take home after taxes, retirement, health insurance, social security, if you had it, you know, everything. This is your, not your gross net, but your, the other one, <laughs> not the gross, but the net, I guess. This is what you come home with. <clears throat> <clears throat> and what you get to actually use, okay? So, let's say you're working with a budget of $3,000 for the month, okay? Let's make sure you can see this. Now, before anything is done with this money, but you're like, Melanie, I'm ready to buy my new pair of shoes, my sunglasses. Like I worked for this money. Yes, you did. But I, I want to show you a little trick, especially if you're new to the workforce and you're not used to getting paid on a monthly basis. Like if you're coming out of college, transitioning into professional life and you're like, woohoo, I'm going to get 3000 bucks a, a month. I can spread that out and I'll be fine. Okay, well, welcome to the teaching world, like I, I said, but there are a couple of things you need to keep in mind. The first thing are your fixed expenses. These are things that 
you need to survive, okay? I'm not talking about credit cards, okay? I know credit cards are a big deal and a lot of people use them on a daily basis to get the rewards and the points. I pump the brakes on that one, okay? I'm talking about your rent, your utilities, your internet, and whatever else you have, okay? So let's say all this together comes up to, this totals $1,700, okay? Let's just say for our example. So you're gonna take, whoops, sorry about that. You're gonna take your $3,000 and subtract. I know it sounds really basic, but I'm telling you, nobody ever sat down with me to do this. So I know there are other people just like this, just like me in this situation. So you're gonna end up with $1,300 for the rest of the month. Now, notice there's no food on here yet, okay? You have to have a place to live. You have to have lights and food. And if you're working from home, you need internet, okay? So those are expenses that are necessary. You don't even have included in here yet if you bought yourself a car, insurance, gas, none of that, okay? So, what is a priority to you may not be a priority to somebody else, but these are necessities. You don't wanna be homeless. Unless you have the fortune of living at home still and your parents are helping you out until you get on your feet, if you are straight out from college and you're on your own 100%, there's a juggling act. And it's, a, you're, it's like you're juggling and you're on a tightrope at the same time. And so you have to find that balance where these things get paid and you still have somewhat of a quality of life till you build your savings, okay? So you have $1,300 a month. Now, you're gonna look at the month and you're gonna decide, okay, is it four weeks or is it five weeks? Because some months have four, some months have five. Now, we don't really, in the teacher world, we don't like five weeks because that means we have an extra week until the next paycheck. Sometimes it's more than 31 days until you get paid. That's the reality. So you have to figure out in the month that you're currently in. So like right now, July, look at the calendar, July, 2021, there are five weeks. Okay. So there are five weeks in the month. So you're going to take your $1,300 and you're going to divide it by five. And that is your weekly budget, is what I call my magic number. This is my magic number. Now, you'll notice how small that is. And it's okay to have some, a shocking, reality moment right now and like what the beep did I just get myself involved in yes you're gonna you might have that moment right now maybe you won't maybe you already knew what you were in for I had no clue no clue I knew I was gonna get paid once a month but I had the ideas in my head that it was fantasy of course that everything would just work out well it does work out but you struggle along the way so Having a plan in place is going to lower the anxiety and the unknown, and it puts you in a position, not of control, but where you can manage your month a little better. Okay, so you're dealing with $260. Now you have to decide, okay, out of these $260, I still have gas, I have to get to work, right? groceries, I have to eat. 
And then if you have credit cards and phone, you know, all that stuff, all those dot, dot, dots, etc., they go down in here. So now you have to spread it out even further. So ideally what you want to do, I'm going to turn it over. What you want to do on the $260 is you want to figure out, okay, what is safe for me to spend every month? And what should I be saving for? And your saving includes for things like your car payment, your phone payment, insurance, gas, all those things, right? And maybe a vacation down the road. Who knows, right? Vacay. So when you look at this $260, I know it doesn't add up, but I know it doesn't sound like a lot right now. But $260 times five, if you remember, that's your $1,300, okay? So it is a part of a bigger number. So then you have to say, okay, how much am I going to spend out of this a week? Maybe I only spend $60, right? That means you have $200 left over for this every week which is a really smart thing to do if you put the bulk of your weekly budget into this side of your budgeting plan you're going to notice how fast and it does happen fast how fast this number grows and that's what you want this is a good thing because you're going to get yourself in a situation where this will build what's called a buffer. And a buffer is a very nice place to be because this is like your safety net. Remember that tightrope and juggling? Okay, well, you want to have a net underneath in case you fall, right? This is exactly what you're creating. You're creating a buffer. Now, some of these you'll pull out at the end of the month because you have to pay the bill. But others, you don't have to pay out. You can just keep on saving and saving and saving. So, this is ideally how you want to start your teaching career. With a plan in mind and breaking it up into weekly budgets. Because... If you are like me, and it took 17 years to be upside down, going crazy, not having a plan, never sitting back and saying, okay, I'm in control of my money. My money doesn't control me. Your life is going to be filled with anxiety and frustration. And about six to eight months ago, I decided to get off the crazy train and I was watching a ton of YouTube videos on how to budget and save. And this is exactly how I learned to do it. And so now I'm controlling where my money goes. It's not perfect and every week I make tons of mistakes. But I will tell you, because I have managed my money a little bit better and I've created a plan with a magic number every week I am starting to see a positive trend you know trend we like to see those in teaching towards all my savings uh, towards my bank account and now I have savings challenges and I have a savings account something I never had before so I hope this helps so let me show you exactly what I do now. So this was, so now that I've shown you what an example of a teacher income looks like, let's look at what I'm actually doing this month. 
Now my situation is a little different because I just, I am an experienced teacher. I have been teaching for 17 years and I have chosen to resign from my school district and I was rehired at a second school district. So my new job starts next month. Now, if you're a teacher and you have not elected on your paycheck to get paid every 12, every month, and I'm going to highly encourage you to select getting paid every single month. Your paycheck will be smaller, but you will be getting paid every single month, even the summer months. Okay. So I know teachers that say, well, I want a bigger check during the school year. So I want to get paid only for 10 months because we are contracts. We're contracted. So we have that flexibility. And yes, your check will be bigger, but you also have to remember for the month of June and for July, you won't be getting a paycheck. Big fat zero. So unless you save for that and you're really good about saving, then you're going to be, you're going to be in a shit. You're going to be in a real mess and you're going to have to end up getting a second job to help you pull through. So. I always elect to get paid over the course of 12 months. So when I resigned, they actually mailed to me my last paycheck. My last paycheck was $5,965. This is what I got paid for the month of June and July. Remember, Paychecks are always, are usually one month behind. So even though it's July 1st, I haven't gotten paid for June yet. So this is June, what I consider July, and this is August, what I what is really July. So what you're, if that sounds weird, just know that school districts are usually one month behind on paying. So I got two checks in one, and this is after insurance, retirement, my district did elect to pay into Social Security. And there was one other thing. I can't remember. Taxes? Yeah. Okay. So, I got paid $5,965. I need to divide that by two. Okay. So, now I'm working with $2,982. I just round down for each month. Oops. Uh-oh. <laughs> For each month. Okay? Now, I'm not going to look at this at all. This is staying in my bank, and I'm going to pretend that it doesn't exist. Okay? So now I'm working with $2,982 for the month. Additionally, I'm going to add $1,000. And let me explain where that comes from. So my son is moving to Lubbock next month. He has a car that's paid off. I have an older car that's paid off. So I don't want two cars. So now we have three cars that are going to be at home. I did not want that because I can't park in the, in the garage now. So I sold my older car for $4,000. Now, 3,000 of it, the other 3,000 is going to go hang out over here with my August check. I'm not touching this because this is actually already spent going to Texas Tech. Okay, so we're not touching this. So now I'm working with a budget of $3,982. Okay. Now, this is a lot of money. And if this was the old Melanie, I'd be like, woohoo, let's go to Nordstrom Rack. Let's go on you know out to eat every day 
let's go shopping the amazon would be going crazy the truck would be here every day and sometimes it is i'll be quite honest but <laughs> it's not always me anyways <laughs> so now what i have to do is i take this number three thousand nine hundred and eighty two dollars and i divide it by five because there are five weeks in july and now i'm left with okay so now i have a budget of three thousand nine hundred eighty two dollars now, before we start spending, we have to think of our expenses, right? Now, these are my real expenses. I have my phone. And my phone is a family plan, so it looks a little big. It's $373. Then I have the insurance. Now, because I got rid of a car my insurance went down so my insurance now is 78 dollars okay now i am married and my contribution to the house has already kicked in because i pay for all the health insurance which which is over a thousand dollars a month so that is already included in here so if you're thinking well melanie you don't have any rent you don't have utilities you don't have anything my husband and i we don't share money but we do split costs evenly so my contribution is groceries and health insurance which is about fifteen to hundred dollars a month and his expenses for the house are about fifteen hundred dollars a month so it's very equal so now now that you understand a little background of me, these are my two bills that I have. And you'll notice there are no credit cards here. That's because I don't have any. I'm, I've already paid off my credit cards, okay? I've already paid off my car. I've paid everything off because I don't want any more bills like that, okay? So I take these two amounts, 373 plus 78, and that equals $451. So I'm gonna take this $451 and subtract it from 3,982. So 3,982 subtract 451 gives me a total of 3,000 five hundred and thirty one dollars now this is important because we're getting to our magic number the magic number is what i use every week to budget with so remember so let me flip it over okay so we're working with three thousand five hundred and thirty one dollars right we need to divide this by five because there are five weeks in july and when i do that i come with with $706.20, I just round down. So this is my magic weekly number. So each week for the, for the month of July, so week one, week two, week three, week four, and week five, all of those will be getting $706. Pretty simple, right? It took me 17 years to learn this. I am a very stubborn person and I never like to get out of my bad habits. This took 17 years for me to get out of this bad habit and turn it around like this. So now what I do, so I have my 706 weekly dollars that contribute to like some of it goes into spending. In fact, 220 of it goes into spending. And I don't have to spend all of it, but I've allotted for that. And then the 
other, let's see, if I subtract the other $486 goes into savings. You'll notice I'm saving about, what, two thirds? I'm not good with percentages or fractions, but I'm saving the bulk of my money over half into savings and to sinking funds. That's why I love the cash envelope system. So every week I fill my wallet with this amount and if I use it, I use it. If I don't use it, I don't use it and I roll it over into here. But my goal every week, my target that I'm looking for is $706 so that at the end of the month, this is where it gets interesting. At the end of the month, let's say I, let's say I spend this every single week. There were five weeks in July, right? So let's say I save every single week $486 that's five weeks right so for $486 times five I have saved for the month of July if I do it correctly $2,430 I am not trying to figure out on week five, how to make $4 last five days. I have, if I need it, saved $2,430. That is the majority of my paycheck. Now, imagine doing that over the course of a year, okay? If I did this for the year times 12, right? Since we're playing with numbers, in one year, I can save $29,160. That's not my whole salary, but at the end of the year, if I can have $29,000 in my savings account to buy a home, if I wanted to, which I don't need to, but I could, right? To put it towards retirement, if I did this for five years, at the end of five years, look how much money I would have. And this is without even investing in it. This is just straight up savings. So yes, getting paid once a month sucks, yes. But if you make it work for you instead of against you, it can be a beautiful thing. You just have to keep that debit card away from you. And now with this kind of cushion, if there's something you really want to buy, you can because you have the money to do it. So this is what I'm working with this week. This is my actual budget that you're seeing here. And I hope you really like this video. I hope you give it a like. Subscribe. If you know someone that's going to be a teacher or just coming out of college and they don't know any budgeting, and they've been just kind of living in the wind and now they're coming down to reality, you know, forward them this video. It's a nice gentle way to bring them into reality because it is a harsh reality to get paid once a month and make it stretch out. And that's if you don't have any of the extras like married or with kids. Ooh, I already have teacher fingers. Um, so keep that in mind, you know, if you don't have a, a spouse, a child, a partner, and you're on your own doing this, you might as well get a stockpile of money saved up. And if you are with extra responsibilities, especially a dependent, um, this can be very stressful if it's not planned out just right. And maybe your numbers don't look like this at first. But over time, they will. Just give it some time and it will. So that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed my budgeting video. And I hope this helps you out a lot. I love the budgeting community here on YouTube. They've been so supportive. They've taught me a ton. And so anything I can do to help someone else to pay it forward, I will. So 
Have a great day. Enjoy your 4th of July. Make good choices. Bye.